Good evening. Uh, I'm so excited we're meeting here tonight. Um, I'll first of all introduce myself. My name is Leo Mente, and I'm the planning director for the city. I'm also um, in charge of building inspection and animal control. Um, I've been told this board hasn't met for some years now, and I hopefully will be meeting quite often uh, than what has happened in the past. Uh, I have with me here uh, Caleb Hill. He works with me in the planning office. And I have uh, Jerry Turner. Uh, she's also in the planning office. She's our secretary. I would allow um, Teresa and Kevin to introduce themselves since they will be taking, uh, they will be doing much at this uh, meeting tonight. So as part of the agenda, uh, I will give it, uh, I would like to go, uh, give it a chance to introduce yourself. Um, probably just a brief introduction or anything that you think we as staff should know about you and then we'll move forward with the meeting. So since you just came in, we'll start with you here. All right, my name is Robin Thacker. I'm the Director of Student Nutrition for Nacogdoches Independent School District. I've been here since 2009. And so, um, and I have served safe certified and uh, we, we do pretty well on our health inspections. Great, thank you. Kevin can attest to that. Okay. I'm Ann Royal Anderson. I'm director of St. Francis Rescue Nacogdoches, which is an animal rescue organization. Okay. Here in town, we're 501C3, a public That's charity, right. and we work closely with the animal shelter and everything we do. Great. My name is Amber Miller. I have, um, I'm a business owner here in Nacogdoches. I've also been employed in special education in Nacogdoches County for the past 11 years, and I am also the director of a 501C uh, breed-specific dog rescue. Right. Thank you. And my name is Beth Blackburn. I'm the owner of Brigade Child Care, uh, and I've been <coughs> in the business uh, since I was 12, I think. I see. <laughs> <laughs> but I've, Kevin also has done inspections at, at our place, and we Great. do very well as well. Okay. Great. Uh, my name is Donna Fickus, and I am a professor at SFA. I teach in hospitality administration, so I teach restaurant and food service and all that good stuff. So. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Hi, I'm Wendy Blunt. I'm a local veterinarian and uh, with an interest in shelter medicine. Okay, perfect. Um, as part of the agenda, the next on, uh, on the list is to elect a chair and vice chair. Just every board needs a, needs a chairman and a a vice chair. So at this moment, I'll take nomination for for the chair. I would like to to nominate uh, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> I second her nomination. Okay, Any other nom nomination? Okay. So uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And then we'll want to find out from you if you accept the nomination. <laughs> yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead with the vice uh, chair. Any nomination? Anybody? <laughs> Any meeting money but okay to talk about? <laughs> I'll nominate old uh, Miss Donna. Oh, Donna Thickus over there. Second. Okay. Any other? All right. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. And uh, do you accept them? All right. Thank you very much. Okay. So we don't want to waste much of your time uh, today. So we'll just go ahead with. Um, so the purpose of the meeting today is to let staff give you a brief overview of what has has happened over the last years and. Uh, the, uh, what they plan to do uh, moving forward, and uh, they will introduce themselves uh, as they come uh, to do their presentation. So uh, since we say ladies first, I think we'll start with uh, Teresa, and then uh, we'll move it from there. Thank you Good evening. Teresa Jordan, manager at the Animal Shelter. Um, I'm just going to give you some general information about the shelter. Some of you are very familiar with it. Um, uh, so for those of you that aren't, some of this will probably be a surprise to you. Um, the shelter employs seven people. We have three animal control officers, two kennel attendants, one office assistant, and myself as the manager. Our animal control officers are the ones that you see out in the public. They're the ones in the trucks picking up strays, enforcing city codes, 
um, dealing with animal cruelty cases, dog fighting cases, that kind of thing. And unfortunately, in a town this size, we do get those. Um, our animal care attendants, kennel attendants at the shelter, are in charge of cleaning and feeding and taking care of the animals on site. They, um, as far as I'm concerned, do a wonderful job. They have over 200 kennels to clean every day, and the animals that they take care of are dependent on them completely. Um, our office assistant takes care of all the paperwork. She is a trooper. She's doing the adoptions and the reclaims and all the paperwork that's required by the state uh, to process in and out all of these animals. Um, and myself, I do all of that along with um, the general running of the shelter, staffing, scheduling, that type of thing. Um, unfortunately, one of the things that we do have to do at the shelter is euthanize. Uh, we are a city shelter, but we take animals from the entire county. Um, we don't go out into the county to pick them up. The people outside the city limits are responsible for bringing in strays and problem animals and that kind of thing on their own or having the sheriff's department do that for us. Uh, once they've been at the shelter for three days on a stray hold, then they're eligible to go up for adoption. And we try to get as many of them adopted out as possible. Uh, we work with rescues. We work with local shelters or with we actually exchange animals with shelters. Um, if we have one that somebody needs in their town, they actually will come and pick them up from us and we'll do a transfer between shelters. Um, we've sent several animals out of state to rescue. We, nobody wants to do the portion in the back. We all want to make sure these animals get good homes and we do everything we can to make sure that happens. Unfortunately, um, we took in last year, and this was a low intake year, 3,450 animals. That's a lot better. It's much yeah. better than it has been. We usually, in the last five years, our average has been right around 3,600. So last year was a very low year for us. Um, we had 1,215 live dispositions. That includes adoptions, transfers to rescue, animal reclaims by their original owners. Animal went stray, owner realized it, called the shelter, came and picked it up. Um, and also transfer into foster. So we do use foster system as well. Um, we had approximately 860 calls, and that is our initial calls for stray animals, for need for traps. Um, and we trap both domestic animals and wildlife. Um, if it's something bigger than what we normally handle, we get in touch with Parks and Wildlife. So it's a community uh, cooperation event. Um, we have dealt with uh, several animal cruelty and dog fighting cases in our area. This past year, we actually went to court with two of them. Uh, one animal cruelty case came to us in 16, and the case finally went to court this past year. We did get a guilty verdict on that, and the person was sentenced to a year in jail, restitution, among other things. Um, we had two dogs that came to us in 2013. There were two individuals arrested in that case. Uh, they were fighting the dogs in their backyard inside the city limits. Uh, those dogs both found homes after they were seized, and... We finally went to court on that one this past year, and one of the gentlemen involved, we got the guilty verdict. He had to pay restitution to both the Humane Society and to the animal shelter for the cost involved in caring for those animals, and he received 10-year sentence in prison. Um, one of the other things that we provide, um, well, we actually work with the Humane Society, and every animal from a shelter that gets adopted by state law must be spayed or neutered. Um, we do follow up on those. Our Animals Humane Society here in town actually provides a voucher with every single adoption, and that covers a good portion of the cost of the surgery, making it easy for the new owners uh, to get their animals fixed and to do it in the time that's set by the state. Um, last year, as of, as of the time that I wrote this, we, had, we only had 107 animals that had not been spayed or neutered. Um, and that includes any animal that was a puppy or a kitten that's still under the age of being spayed at this time. So it's actually quite low. Um, we submit every, at the end of every month, we have a spay-neuter contract that's separate from our adoption form. Um, they sign that individually. It outlines the law, what their responsibilities are, when their deadline is. Um, we pull those every month. We have copies of those from every adoption. And at the end of each month, Based on the deadline, we submit that paperwork to Jeff Davis's office 
for prosecution purposes. Um, he has done a bang up job with follow through and contacting people and getting compliance. A lot of times it's just they forget to bring the proof to the shelter. Um, and we've managed to keep hundreds of cases out of the courts and be able to just get them to submit the paperwork that they need to and get that taken care of. So that was something that when I first started with the shelter was um, they weren't as diligent. It wasn't at that 10%. Time. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it was definitely something that was kind of put on the back burner because they had so many other things going on. Um, but we're, we worked with Jeff when he came in, explained to him what our issues were, and uh, worked out a system that worked for all of us. And now that's gotten our numbers way down and compliance is, is up, um, or at least verification of compliance. Uh, one of the other things that we also do at the shelter is uh, we quarantine animals. So any bite case that breaks the skin with a dog, cat, or ferret, um, they get quarantined at the shelter. And anything that is a wildlife has to be submitted to the state and tested for rabies. And it is here. We do have it. Um, in 2013, we had six skunks that tested positive. In 2014, we had three skunks. 2015, we had no positive cases. 2016, we had two bats and two skunks. In 17, we had seven skunks and two bats, so it was way up that year. And these are just the ones that were being brought to our attention. Um, and then this past year, we had two skunks and two bats. So, and this is primarily stuff that's within, several of these have, have been within the city limits. Um, a lot of this comes to us from the county, people that their dogs interacted with an animal, they shot the animal, brought it to us for testing. Um, and we're happy to do that. We want to make sure that people know what they're getting into and what their dogs have been or their animals have been in contact with, what their kids have possibly been in contact with. So um, every time we get something like that, we do what we need to do and we send those animals into the state for testing and we usually have the results back within a day or two. Um, everything we do is a community effort. We have to have the community's help. We have to have other organizations that help us out to make sure all this stuff gets done and providing homes for these animals in different avenues other than being adopted through the shelter to get them into homes. Um, we do get a lot of networking through SFA. Every sorority, every fraternity, every student organization on campus is required to do community service hours. They come out to the shelter, they walk the dogs, they get them out of their kennels, they spend time with them, they get the cats out in the, in the room and they let them play and they give them out of cage playtime. It makes them more sociable, it makes them more adoptable, and it helps us. Um, we continue with that. We have done lectures at SFA for different classes. Um, we do interviews with communications groups and that kind of thing, classes for their assignments, their semester projects and things, um, providing them with information about the shelter, and they broadcast that on their radio stations and their TV station. Um, we also do education programs in the local schools, the elementary schools. We've done programs with Boy Scouts and Girl Scout groups, um, just general how to take care of your animals. And working with the kids is fantastic. They will punk their parents out in a heartbeat. My mom never takes my dog in for shots. <laughs> so then mom and dad get a lecture because their kids learned something that day. So any way we can get the word out and make sure that the animals and, and people are working well together, then we're happy to do that. Um, we have worked with other organizations. The high school has their honor society program, has hosted an adopt-a-thon at the shelter uh, last year and this year. They usually do that in April or May. And it's basically a clear the shelter kind of event. We do it on a Saturday. A lot of times we can't get all of them out on a Saturday, but it's an extra day that we're open for business. People come in, they have hot dogs and snow cones and popcorn and and all that, and the school actually provides the volunteers to walk the dogs and get them out and introduce them to people. Um, and it makes it a fun day for people to come out and just visit with their local community and organizations. Um, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. If you guys have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer anything that I can. Do y'all work with PetSmart like, or Pets, PetSense whenever they're having theirs too, or is that separate? Do they help you with y'all? It's generally separate. We don't go okay. to the Adopt-a-thon events because there's some, there are health issues related to that. You have so many animals that come and go out of the stores that run loose. We don't take puppies out of the shelter because they're exposed to parvo if they touch the ground. There's a lot of things that they can contract based on just general contact. So 
We generally don't take the animals out into the public areas within the city. We will take older dogs occasionally, um, but most of the time when people want to do adoption events or functions or where they're you know, having the animals come out, they don't want the older dogs, they want the puppies. And I just, I have to explain to them that for health and safety issues, we can't do that. Um, we have gone to SFA for, um, they have a health fair that they host generally, basically it's kind of an information session on um, how animals and people work together and how that can be healthy for people and emotional support and that kind of thing. Um, and it gives the animals an opportunity to be uh, exposed and networked even more. Um, if we can't make it out there, generally we work with um, NAC Foster Rescue is a group that started as just foster moms for the shelter and then they eventually formed their own foster or, or their own rescue organization. And um, the animals that they have, some of them are ones that have been given to them to find homes for, others they have actually pulled from the shelter. Uh, so those animals are being seen, they're being networked, they're being adopted through the rescue instead of through the shelter, but it's getting the animals out alive. If there is a, this is, this situation came up recently with an acquaintance mm -hmm. of mine, and I wasn't sure what to tell them, but I told them to call you guys and ask. Um, a worker went to a home out in the county and was bitten by a dog. Mm -hmm. Would they have been able to contact you guys to see about that dog being quarantined? The dog is, was quarantined at the shelter. Um, anytime there's a bite case, if it's if they report the bite case or if they go to a medical facility and they get treatment, then the medical facility notifies us. Okay. We go to the medical facility, we take pictures of the wounds, we do our bite report, the animal is quarantined for the 240 hours that's required by state law. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of that time, if they want to reclaim the dog, they can. If not, the dog will remain at the shelter. And if it was an incidental bite, if kids were reaching for toys and the dog and the kid kind of clashed at the wrong moment, and it's not something that was an aggression issue, then we can put those dogs up for adoption. Mm -hmm. um, if it's an outright aggressive dog, they're euthanized. We do not put them up for adoption. Okay. I, I did refer them to you, and I don't know if they called or not, but... It, it wouldn't be the first time that we have gotten... We've had several like that yeah. recently, so yeah. I don't know if it's this particular case, but... Right. Right. Uh, we have had several. The question for, in my mind was because it was in the county and not in the city. So. We are the local rabies control authority. Okay. So any bite that is reported comes to us, and okay. the quarantine is either done at the shelter or at a local vet's office. And it's up to the owner. Mm -hmm. um, it just has to be done. Right. First of all, thank you so much. What a huge undertaking mm -hmm. for any, any animal control, and especially in, for, for you to handle the county. And we have such a large rural area in this county, not yes, just the city. It's what a huge undertaking. Um, do you, like you, you said um, that y'all were able to get a, you know, some convictions in the past few mm -hmm. years. I, you know, I, that was not, maybe I have missed it, but that was not something I was aware of. Does that ever get any kind of publicity or, I mean, is, I mean, does, does the public ever learn? Is there a way that the public learns about, I mean, essentially the, uh, the, the good, the, the great right, things that right. you're doing? Um, if there are arrests made, like in the case with the two dogs that were being fought in the backyard, uh -huh. there were two arrest made, so that was part of the police report. Uh -huh. um, so that was public record. The court hearing was in the county court, but they generally don't do like a brief. Um, I don't think I've ever seen anything in the newspaper or anything like that. There was an article like in the paper about the convictions. Was there, each okay. there was a story about it, but they don't mm -hmm. they don't generally do like a, the police report where they say mm -hmm. this charge was filed, this charge was filed. Mm -hmm. They don't do a breakdown of each individual court right. case okay. that goes through the county court. And there were articles in the recent, just the seizures, they haven't even gone to court yet, and they made the paper mm -hmm. the, for the horses. Well, that was yeah. also, um, we had PD go out and execute the warrant with us. So because it was an agency assist and it was through the police department, that's, why. that's posted in the police officer report. This may, I may just not be in, in the right circle with things, but do y'all have a Facebook page? We have a page that is run by one of our volunteers. She started volunteering with the shelter eight or nine years ago. She started that page and people have flocked to it. They look there for pictures and we have volunteers that come into the shelter that take pictures of the animals, video of the animals when they've interacted with them at the shelter and they post them to the page. 
So that also is another avenue of networking these animals and getting their faces out there and, and getting them homes. So we've had a lot of response from that web page. It's Pets at Nacogdoches Animal Shelter is the name of the Facebook page. And Kelly Whaley is our, uh, our volu longtime volunteer that started that page several years back. And she doesn't even live here. She lives in Crockett. She drives all the way to Nacogdoches every time she comes to volunteer. <laughs> And it seems like your Pet of the Week program works pretty well. It does. Most yeah. of those animals get adopted. Yeah. I have a question. You, it's not directly in your purview, but do you happen, you work right across the hall, do you happen to know how many vouchers the Humane Society put out this year with their program? Uh, I believe they posted at the shelter 1331. That's really um, good. This February they did a Valentine's special, and they did okay. 1141 spays and neuter vouchers just for that two-week time frame they issued those vouchers now that doesn't count their regular program sure. that they do for the county um, that includes um, emergency aid for animals right. that may have gotten hit by cars and the owner don't have the money to take care of an emergency vet bill right there on the spot um, they do that a lot um, spend a lot of time and, and effort and money on emergency cases um, they did the 1141 vouchers during that two-week time frame for the special but then they also every animal at the shelter gets a voucher that gets adopted and for our small dogs and our cats it's eighty dollars off the cost of the surgery at any local vet for the larger dogs they do a hundred dollars and it's basically just a gift certificate they book the appointment take their animals in they can choose the vet that they want to use um, and then they get the discounted price on the surgery so that's worked out very well and they also require spay neuter for any animal that they help, which is a great policy mm -hmm. that they have. Right, yeah. right. They when they help with emergency aid, it is a requirement that if we help you with this, then you promise to get your animal fixed. Mm -hmm. So it's cutting down slowly mm -hmm. on our stray population. It's going to take a lot more work on everybody's part, networking, cats, getting that information cats. out there. Yeah. It's, it's all about <laughs> it's all about education. All about education. So. Anything we can do to help and get that word out there, we're happy to do. Um, when your strays go into, when they go out for adoption, mm -hmm. when they're adoptable, do you have a time period that you will that you can hold them for? Does it no. just depend on the room? That I'm not you have euthanizing an animal just because it's been in the shelter for okay. a week. Uh, if the animal is in good health, if it's not aggressive, and we have space, it stays for as long as we can keep it. When we actually do a cull, if we're culling for space. Um, we look back, is this animal heartworm positive? Is it likely to get adopted? The smaller ones are more likely to get adopted if they have heartworms than the larger ones. So we end up having to pull the large ones because you're looking at an additional five, six hundred dollars just for a heartworm treatment. Mm -hmm. um, and that goes up depending on what vet you use. And um, so when we're pulling, we're pulling for space. It's how long has this been here? Has it had any interest? Does it have any issues that we need that's keeping it from being adopted. Mm -hmm. And that's, we have to weigh that very carefully. And it's not something that we allow any one person to do. Mm -hmm. It is a team decision. We all talk about it. Is there any interest on this animal? They check with our office assistant. We have two animal control officers that go out. The kennel attendants, if they see any health issues with the animals, they let us know at the front desk. We talk to the ACOs about it. We check on the animals. If it's something that we think we need to get out of the shelter, we do that immediately. Okay. I guess what do you, my other question would be, what do you see as your, your biggest need in the shelter right now? Uh, I would have to say probably staffing. Okay. We can always use additional staff. When you're dealing with, with live animals, um, no day is ever the same. And some days you sail through and it's no problem and other days are just kind of nightmares with your current staff how many animals are you able to keep right now we have approximately 150 animals on shelter on a daily basis sometimes more right now we have more it's kind of your target though we're coming into the spring session so we have uh, I think last Thursday we had 80 puppies in the shelter and when the more puppies you get the more stressful it is the more stressed the animals are the more depleted their immune systems are, the more likely they are to get sick, and then we end up with animals that are getting sick that we have to euthanize. So um, building another shelter is not going to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. We can fill a shelter next week, and then we can fill another shelter the following week. Mm -hmm. So it's, 
it's all about education, getting these animals spayed and neutered, making sure they're vaccinated and they're healthy. Um, keep your animals indoor if it's in heat. Don't let it breed. If you don't want puppies, keep your animal put up. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Unfortunately, we live in a rural community and people want to let their animals run and whatever happens, happens. Um, and until we get that point across, it's, it's going to continue the way it is. I'm glad that you've decided to do that because I know in times past there's room in your shelter for more than that, but you can't care for them, and then that led to bad situations. So I think well, we have a limited amount of. It's staff. hard, but I think right. you're doing the right, right. thing. Yeah, um, our staff can only do so much. Right, and right. we know what that limit is. Um, and again, it's it's a very stressful situation for animals. No animal is used to being kept in a kennel in a room with 15 other animals. That are barking and yapping that are as uncomfortable as they are you know so it's um it's just not a good situation and generally very very young puppies and kittens um the shelter is damp we're cleaning we're sanitizing every day and they tend to develop upper respiratory infection it can advance into pneumonia very quickly so you're looking at kittens and puppies that just because of the situation they're in are going to get sick and we're going to have to pull them Anything else? Okay, uh, before you go, so this is a public hearing, a public meeting. So at this moment, the chair would ask anybody in the audience if they have any comments <laughs> or <laughs> too, too bad your work has already started. So you would ask anybody in the audience if they have any contribution or questions or anything like that. He's okay. actually one of the board members. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's hiding in the back. Yeah. <laughs> you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Say, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, what you did. Thank you. I think uh, one thing yes. Teresa does really well is uh, giving a tour and uh, I call it an educational tour of the animal shelter. And since the city council has appointed you, I would recommend that you find time and visit with her. She will show you so much. In fact, uh, the last time I went in there, I, I came back with so much information, I just didn't know what to do to myself. So, so please find time and uh, get in touch with any of us and she would be happy to If you'd to like to come out and take yeah. a tour of the shelter, yeah. please do. I'll be happy to, to walk you guys around, show you what we do and show you the shelter and uh, answer any other questions that you might yeah. come up with once you see it. Are there days that are better than others? Uh, if you want to come out and do a tour, do it in the morning. We're not open for business until noon, yeah. um, but we're not having to deal with customers and the phone ringing because the officers are vaccinating, they're taking care of the animals, they're feeding, that kind of thing. Um, so that's kind of our time to do what work we need to do that we can't do while we're open for business. Call ahead. Um, please do. Um, that way at least we know you're coming. The front door will be locked from 7 to 12. So if we know you're coming, we'll be watching for you. Um, but we'll, we'll be happy to do that. And uh, she's good on emails. I'll send an email to everybody. <laughs> if you have okay. to email her, you, okay. you can do that as well. So. Absolutely. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, this board is <laughs> Thank you. This board is made up of... Um, this board is to advise on animal control and health uh, inspections. So I'll call on Kevin, uh, introduce himself, how many years you've been in the city, and then you let you know with your. Let me give you this copy. I'm not going to, I'm not going to read it. So y'all can take it home, do whatever you want to. Uh, that's for more, this is more for the folks. I know Beth and Hunter and Robin all know what I do. Uh, I'm, my name's Kevin Hammond. I work for the health department. I'm a health inspector. I've been uh, with the city since 2001, health inspector since 2003. Um, we, our primary goal is customer safety. You know, We're not trying to be gotcha people, but if some, there are, are times we do have to, if somebody doesn't obey the rules, we do have to get the ticket book out. Uh, every once in a while we have to shut down people. That's not very common. Uh, that's one good thing about Nacogdoches is a, I just do the city limits. I don't do the county. So it's a pretty good environment to control everything. Now, I don't do SFA. That's the state property. And the lady that does the SFA state property, she also does the county of Nacogdoches. She works for 
you may know who she is, I don't know, the DSHS lady, Rayla is okay. her name, yeah. And anything out of the city limits, she does about five counties, so they're spread pretty thin, you know, and they're, they're strictly uh, food service inspectors. Am I talking too loud? No, you okay. Mean. I got a pretty loud voice. Um, but um, I do food service inspections, but that's, I don't even know if that's 50% of my job, to be honest with you. Because uh, I also, uh, the first page is kind of just a, is goals and objectives. We, you know, we want to continue to provide the customer service. Um, we respond to complaints. If we get a, and I get complaints that are legitimate, and I get some that I can tell are not so legitimate, but I'm still going to go ahead and, you know, we have to be a little bit like Chicken Little and play it safe and we'll inspect anything we get. And we take anonymous complaints also. So we try to respond to those if it's a real drastic sounding one, I'll try to get it there as soon as possible immediately, but we do want to get out there within 24 hours, okay? Um, we uh, inspect restaurants, food sales, which is like a convenience store or a grocery store, uh, daycare facilities. There's a lot of cities that do not inspect daycare facilities. You, you know, the state has uh, people that inspect uh, the daycare facilities, and I, I don't believe Longview or Tyler inspects daycare facilities. They have their state people do it. But we do it as a courtesy, um, and we also do uh, motels, which is lodging inspections. Now, I do nursing home inspections, but it's just strictly the kitchen because that's also a state dad's uh, does those. And there are some cities that don't even do nursing home kitchens. They let the state do them. And then, you know, I do the school district, of course. Uh, the only one I have is Nacogdoches School District. It has 11 schools, though. <coughs> so that's, and we try to get them every September because that's the first year. And I, we try to do our inspections every six months, but it could be because we, we need to do them minimum twice a year. Um, and the swimming pools, that's something that'll start about May, May, June, July, August. That's kind of our hot swimming pool season. Uh, this town is a college town, so there's a lot more pools than people realize. There's 55 swimming pools, I inspect. That's motels, apartments, uh, boys and girls clubs, spas. Um, and the fee change, our health permit application is pretty reasonable right now. We're going to have to go up on that. It's been 2005 since we've done it, so we need to... That's one of the big changes we're going to have. Um, uh, since the last time we did meet here, Robin, I know, and Beth and Hunter were, and you might, you were here too, I believe. That was 2013. <laughs> it's yeah. been six years. So we're kind of reintroducing ourselves today and uh, kind of letting you know what's going on here. But we're, we're going to try to do this every quarter, aren't we? So I think that'll be sufficient. Um, I'm just going to, the second page, is just is a month I did in February. It's just numbers. I'm not going to read it to you, but this shows you we, what kind of inspections I do. Uh, there's farmers market. I take care of that. The, the flea market. Uh, you know, food trucks. We've got a food truck ordinance that we we're still it's still fluid. And we may change it, right, Leo? And that's something that's kind of a hot thing right now. So we're uh, we're wanting to be business friendly, but we're also wanting to be We've, we're regulators too, so we have to be kind of a. There's a fine line. You got to be customer service, but you've, you know, we got to be sensitive to business around town too. So that's something that uh, Leo is is uh, looking into. They may have a few adjustments on that. You know, that's still a work in progress. Um, let's see. And like I said, complaints we get. I'll be honest with you. I don't get a lot of complaints, which is good, but. When I, and sometimes we don't get them because people just don't call. But we do get some. It, usually when we get them, it's usually, I hate to say this, but it's usually the warm weather. It brings out the uh, people who are upset and I think kind of, and they may, and, they, and, and I think they're already a little agitated and they may get sick easier too. So mm -hmm. we've, we get that. Um, the winter time during the holidays, we hardly get any complaints. It's, everybody's kind of got other things going on, but they can happen anytime. You know, we're, like I said, we're food safety. We can't prevent everything, we, but we're trying to, it's like somebody will say, well, how come that restaurant, well, I'll tell you what, some of them are only doing every six months. If they're not doing very well, I'm going to be in there a lot more often, and I don't tell them when I'm coming. Some people say, oh, you tell them? No, they don't know when we're coming. 
You know, you can ask Robin. <laughs> she knows what month we're coming usually, but <laughs> he wouldn't even have to tell us that. I, I have people <laughs> we we can kind of do it, uh, but we'd like to do theirs. Uh, we know they have reports they have to get in, so we we were pretty sensitive to that. And we and I finished all the the schools, so you're done this month. Oh, then I have two managers that have not turned their paperwork. <laughs> well, they just they were done today, so <laughs> so I got the finals done there. But we. Uh, you know, we we the farmers market. I try to keep a good eye on it. You know, it's we we want to be business friendly, but we got to be careful. There's not any stuff going on. People selling homemade tamales, that kind of thing, and that you know, food that's not supposed to be there. And I don't know if y'all are familiar. I know you're familiar with the cottage food law, and probably Robin and Beth, you maybe too. That's a little bit, and you maybe too. I don't know. The cottage food law is, is allowing people to sell food in the homes, but it's certain foods, you know. And they are allowed to go to the farmer's market, too. So it's got a little more flexibility than it used to. In fact, in fact Saturday, I'm going to be working there. Uh, there's only about three vendors out there, but they've got the spring fling this Saturday. Mm -hmm. So and, and that's a fun deal. They do a thing in October and, a, and one in the, in the spring. And I, I really like the farmer's market now. They've kind of settled down in a little more. They've got good people in there, and they're kind of keeping it, you know, uh, it's not the wild, wild west. Is it? It's kind of tame for out there. But they're, they're doing good stuff with it, you know. It used to just strictly be produce, vegetables, but now they've got a lot more, you know, they got cheese and uh, they sell beef, uh, some of the beef out there. They sell all kinds of things out there. And tamale, they do have a lady that does sell tamales, but she's legitimate. <laughs> she's got, she has a county, uh, lives in the county, and I know her son, he's one of my buddies, but she's got a... Um, uh, facility that Rayla inspects, the state inspector, and so she's a good lady and does a good job, and there's several others out there. So this, I had the monthly one, and then the week, I just put the one that had my weekly, that I did last week. That just, I'm pretty much a paper detail guy, kind of a, I like to document everything, and Leo likes that too. I send him a report. His report's a little more detailed than this. I'm not specific on this one. I'm just giving you some you know, I don't tell you which stores I went into, but uh, there are a few I might have mentioned, but, you know, most of them I don't. I, that's for his information, but, and we're public record for sure. We, <laughs> we uh, were on the TV station every two weeks, so I faxed those copies, all the restaurants, it's usually just specifically food service restaurants. Every two weeks, I send them to Donna. Uh, she used to have a local office here, but now they're in Lufkin. So we send those to her. They are, um, I'll be honest with you, this is how they, she told me they, they get the four worst scores. That's the ones that, okay. so it's a deterrent is what it is, you know. There's not a whole lot of atta girls or atta boys on it. It's more like you didn't do too well. But, so, and I like that, you know, that keeps, that tries to keep people honest a little bit. Also, the Daily Sentinel, this is the only town I know that does this, but they put it in the Sunday paper, and they, everything they put in there is what I type in. My, as you can see on this, uh, not the last page, but the one that says uh, miscellaneous roadside vendors, and it's got a breakdown of, uh, down on the bottom, I got the break. What we do is like uh, January and July, that's usually the same. I'll inspect that. If it's a good facility, I'll inspect it January and July, every six months. And then the numbers to the right. And you can tell my writing's pretty poor. I don't have very good penmanship, so... Uh, I type everything out in big bold letters for the TV station and for the newspaper just to make sure there's no, uh, nothing's incorrect. And uh, it, that, that's public information also. We also keep a book in the office, and it's for the whole calendar year. And, and you know, we have, uh, you can go back five years for public information requests and uh, see the whole original inspection. You know. But uh, that page that says miscellaneous roadside vendors, what I did with this is just showed you the total of inspections that are considered uh, routine type inspections. Uh, and this is fluid. It, you know, we have businesses that open, close, open, close. There's 55 swimming pools there. I put those on the, and like I said, that's May through August. And then there's 316 other kind of uh, inspections. So your total is 371, and that's, you want to do them twice a year. Now, I'm not putting, there's a lot of these I do more than twice a year. <laughs> Not a lot, but there's a handful of ones that I would call uh, red flag type things, operations, high risk maybe. Um, but that's that gives you, that's the routine. That, that's not including the uh, complaints. We do customer service. We help people get, 
that want to set up new businesses. They go through a pre-development meeting. That's what we try to get them to encourage them to do is meet with the planning zone in Leo. And they have the fire department, the building guys there, the wastewater. And they, if they have any questions, like, and we don't charge them for it, we're, we're trying to help them. We don't want them to invest a whole lot of money and then, oh, what did I do, you know. We want to make sure they're, before they jump in it that they're prepared. You know, trying to be business friendly. Uh, Sometimes Nacogdoches doesn't have that good a reputation for being business friendly, so we're trying to, you know, help that. I'm a regulator, so I have to do my thing, but we do want to try to help people. And when I do an inspection on these folks, and they're, especially if they're new, uh, I do try to educate them and, you know, get them in the right direction and uh, try to help them out that way. Uh, now, the last two pages, I know I'm going pretty fast. I talk fast, but y'all can ask me any questions you need to, but... My, my thing's not quite as, as uh, I don't, I'm a staff of one. She's got whatever, how many, <laughs> she's got a bit different deal than I do. Mine's a little different. Um, the last two pages, the first one is the retail food inspection. This is the current form we use. It's got 47 items. Uh, it's 100 demerits. This is a, from the Texas Food Establishment Rules, 2015, October. That's when they changed it. Uh, TIFER. And it's from the Texas Restaurant Association. This is what the state form looks like, and we adopt the state form. I know Longview uses the old form, which is the one on the back, because they didn't like the new form. But I know I've worked with Tyler, and uh, I know Lufkin, I believe, uses this one too. Most people use this. I know Rayla uses this state form, the 47 items. And it's a little bit, I'll be honest with you, it's, it's a little nitpicky, but it's also more lenient because it's three demerits, the first uh, 20 items for three demerits, which is 60. Uh, and then you got 14 times two, that's 88. And then the last uh, items, there's 12, uh, that's 100 demerits. This is something that kind of ties in with animal shelter because I know y'all may not be too interested in some of this stuff, but, but the health stuff. But the garbage, we used to not count off for that, but they do count off for garbage lids not being closed. And I've, I've never, my predecessor, y'all probably know Tommy Wheeler, some of y'all, I'm sure. He said they've had incidents where cats get in those garbage cans and can't get out. So, and I, yeah, and I don't know. There's some animals that can, but you're, I've never seen that. But so that's one. I mean, you want to keep them closed for that reason. Uh, they get smelly. They it prevents mice, uh, bugs. And it's just we try to keep the things closed, especially we've got six months of summer coming up. So, you know how it's going. <laughs> going to get pretty gamey. So I'm glad we can count off for that now. I mean, it's only one point, but uh, that gives us a little more of a, and it's helped. There's a lot more I'm trying to keep them closed, at least the restaurants, I mean, and the nursing homes, place like that. But uh, that's the big difference in that one. Um, now, the other form was the one that we used back in 2013 when we had this last meeting. We used this up till 2016. It's the, the first five items or five demerits each, which I kind of like that because temperature is a big thing. You know, that's the big one. Uh, I like hand washing and temperatures. That's my two big pet peeves. If there's something wrong with that, I'm not going to ever be discreet on that. It's going to be by the book. You got to be on those um, because somebody can get sick. And if somebody, the reason we're so strict on the hand sink, if somebody has a pot or a pan in there, we don't want them to go, ah, I can't wash my hands. You know, you, got, you don't want them to have an excuse not to wash their hands. It, so it always wants to be supplied, the path unimpeded, nothing in there. And then the temperatures, you know, you have to meet those. If you don't, food goes in the trash. And that's an expensive lesson, but it's better than somebody getting sick. You know, like I said, we're a little bit, we're worst case scenario, but we got to be that way, you know, play it that way. And uh, that last one is five demerits and then the, Six through 14 is four demerits, and then the last ones are uh, one, uh, three demerits, so that adds up to 100 demerits also. The only t I've had to close a few places, not too often. If you don't have hot water, you're automatically closed. That's, if bathrooms don't work, you have to close, because uh, these are state and federal building and you know, health rules. Or if you've got sewage backup, anything like that, you have to, that's imminent health hazards with those considered. Now, passing is pretty lenient, to be honest with you. 30 demerits, that's a lot of demerits, but that's actually passing. You know, if you make 31 demerits, you fail. Um, and then we'll do a follow-up in 48 hours. If you haven't corrected it, we can start writing tickets for each thing and keep you closed till you fix it. But fortunately, I hadn't had too many 
failing scores in a long time. I've had some bad scores, but the 30, we've been able to keep, uh, keep off of that. Uh, the, one of the biggest problems we have in Nacogdoches is this older town. Uh, economy out here, I don't know how great it is sometime, but a lot of the businesses aren't staffed very well. And that's, you know, we're sensitive to that, but you still got to follow the rules and keep your place clean and in good shape. And the buildings are, some of them are in a little bit rough shape. And uh, this new form allows us to count off for uh, physical facilities and, you know, housekeeping. The other one, you really couldn't count off for housekeeping, to be honest with you, because if your floor had dirt on it, it's not a food, you're not, it's not a food contact. But now you can count off for it, so that, that helps, you know. Um, I know it's a little speedy on that, <laughs> but that's why I gave you all this big thing here so you can, you know, look at it and review it. Uh, I didn't really I imagine Hunter, Robin, and Beth, are, they probably, yeah, but you, the other, the you, you newer folks, I'm sure the lady, Donna, your name Donna? Yes. Yeah, you're at SFA, you're familiar kind of with a lot of this too. Yes. And I know Mrs. Anderson is too. She's probably heard this spill a few times. So. <laughs> it's been a few years, though. But um, like I said, we're, we're trying to be customer service. I do speak to SFA classes periodically. I don't do it unless I get a call. They invite me. I don't mind doing it, helping out classes, doing that. And um, I did an interview a few weeks ago. I probably had the deer in the headlights look. I'm not too good on But it was for SFA Communications Department and uh, one of the students, and it all went well. So we, that's part of it. We're, we're, we're here to be... Uh, public relations as well, educate the folks and everything for, but it's primarily public safety. That's what it's all about. Does anybody got any questions for me or? Uh, Kevin, just a, a comment. First of all, thank you for keeping us safe when we go out places. To all right. I do the best I can. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, it's, it's sort of like a, a policeman. I'm not a policeman, but you see somebody going to a speed limit, school zone 30 miles an hour, they don't get a ticket. It's because policemen can't be everywhere. And, and I, I try to explain that to people. Well, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll take care of it, but we can't, we, we just try to deter it the best we can and prevent right. it. Yeah, but I appreciate it. Thank you. But I just also wanted to comment that I, for one, am really happy to see the food trucks. I think that adds yeah, something um, to our town. And I do too, things, yeah. You know, that Some of them are pretty good too. They got good yeah. food. I'm pretty <laughs> impressed with uh, them. Quick comments on the food truck. Uh, mm -hmm. We currently have an ordinance in place, but We've had um, citizens question the ordinance, and so we might present it to the city council again, but it, it will have to go through you, uh, this board, for your recommendation before it goes to the uh, city council. So I, I'm, I'm sure that at our next meeting, we'll probably be discussing the food truck ordinance. What are you looking at changing on that? Uh, the biggest change has to do with food trucks being closer to restaurants. And uh, the, what is it a commissary deal? Commissary. Yeah, where, where, they, where they cook the food. But I think the major one has been food trucks close to restaurants and um, taking customers away from restaurant, um, yeah, from brick and mortar restaurants. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, it is something that will be discussed at our next meeting. And then I will take your recommendation to the city council. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to that. Yeah, okay. Well, the commissary is. Uh, we kind of use a state rule of thumb on that. Um, most, I know in Longview, they're real strict. You have to get a restaurant commissary, a restaurant, restaurant. And they have seven food trucks, somebody told me, in that city's about 90,000 people. Mm -hmm. I think we've got 10 food trucks, so it's restricting there. But that, that's the way, that, there's a little community called Judson that's mm -hmm. north of Longview. Um, and they have 40 food trucks out there every weekend, they say, because, but you know, they're, Longview's pretty rigid, but Longview's a little different town. I grew up in Marshall. Longview is an old oil town, and they're just pretty strict. And their restaurant inspectors, they do inspections. They're pretty well-staffed city. They got a lot of money out there, believe it or not. And they go every quarter, most restaurants, and they do food service only. They're kind of like the state. They don't inspect motels, and they let other folks do that. So it's a little different. Uh, so, But, I mean, Longview, like I said, they still use that old form because they didn't like the new ones. This is not, this is not going to be tough enough. And even Longview, I tell you what, they, we're thinking about going to the ABC scoring system. Mm -hmm. Longview does that. And a lot of people like that. Um, so we're thinking about discussing that and also. And that, that would also, we can only do that with your recommendation. So that would also be coming to you. So we have a lot to do this year. So, yeah. yeah. Any questions? And Kevin, Kevin? Are you, you're the only inspector? 
for the city. Well, I, Angela can help me out periodically, but she's uh, she's code enforcement, <laughs> <laughs> and she just the she doesn't have a lot of time. Yeah, right. I have to help her a little bit too. But yeah, one, that's one good thing about our department. Angela's been doing what she's been doing a long time, and I have. We were all pretty. We're not young people, but. We've all got experience, mm -hmm. and I think in that regard, we kind of know what this needs to be done. This can be on the back burner and prioritize. But for right now, I'm it. And uh, they did a survey a while back in Tyler, and I was like the busiest one. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> but, but that don't hurt my feelings. Uh, the only thing I, I try to, if, if I'm in there pretty quick, I still want to, I'm hitting the highlights. And I'm not, I, I'm still thorough, I'm, but I, that's one good thing with experience. You need, you learn to multitask and do four or five things. That's what you have to do. I know when Rayla does her inspections at the state, they're probably in there several hours, but she may only be doing two a day. She's mm -hmm. traveling too. It's a little different. And I think the state, except for SFA, I'm sure they do that in cushion schools, that kind of thing, Garrison. But their a lot of their stuff is just based on complaints because she has five counties. So they're probably they're stretched pretty thin too. Mm -hmm. So but I, that's one thing about Nagadoch is it's not a big town, so I can oh I need to go over here, it's fifteen minutes, you know, so that makes it kind of nice. I'm not complaining. I like no, to be I busy. Know. I like to be busy, so that's that's a good problem for me. Anybody else got anything? So I guess my other question on food trucks right now, when you're inspecting, are you doing the food truck and their their kitchen separately, or are you well, what this is and that's what I was going to tell you on the state. The state's ruling on commissary is a lot, and we're we may adjust this, but right now we're trying to get them started, mm -hmm. and. These businesses, I know Brendan's has a commissary over here. At the, uh, he's got one at, May, at Reverie Catering, Macy's. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the Cheese guy has got Rev, uh, Red House Winery. He's using their facilities. But most of these folks are just cooking. In their house. It, no, they're not supposed to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I, I mean, but they're co are they cooking I, on the truck. Yeah, I don't look at, I don't go to their homes. But, they, but this is what mm -hmm. they're supposed to do. And I, so far, we, that's one of the good things about this ordinance is we sent them about a 30-page packet about mm -hmm. the state equipment and everything. And the fire department looks at it, too. And that's mm -hmm. really helpful because that makes it a lot more, it's not going to be for the, it, that fire equipment is expensive. Mm -hmm. And if they're not willing to that, well, okay, good. They're not going to be, we don't want them. You know, I mean, I hate to say it, but they're not serious about it. Mm -hmm. But um, you, this is what they're supposed to do. The, the commissary is actually the food truck. Okay. And they're supposed to keep everything plugged in. If they're, if they're holding food overnight in there, keeping it cold and keeping it hot and always letting it, and keeping everything stored in there. Mm -hmm. Most of them, what they'll do is buy enough food to just last a day. And they go to Sam's, Walmart, Kroger. They keep the receipts and they have to keep all their paperwork. That's the commissary. That's what the state looks at. Is your receipts and you know okay you're good to go so that's kind of the commissary rule mm -hmm. that they use okay. i know in longview no they don't they don't that's not good enough for them and i understand there's some cities that are bigger they want a bitter they they don't they have it'd be tougher for them to control it unless they and then you have dallas houston austin they got the big which is ideal i wish we could do it is a, a the, the park, place where yeah. you yeah actually have a commissary and they can store everything there or have a park and mm -hmm. do it there that would be great if they could do that yeah, <laughs> it's still kind of a work in progress. We're learning it, but right. uh, we're trying to be friendly, but you know, we got to be careful too. And I, I'll be honest with you, I inspect these food trucks more often than do the restaurants. You got to, and I tell them that, hey, I'm going to be popping y'all every three or four, every two or three months because mm -hmm. it's, you know, I just have to. It's a little more risky, and they're good. Okay, good. And, and I think it's better for the brick and mortars. They go well, you know, if they're complaining, of, well, I'm in there more often than I'm in here, so. Right. You know, you kind of, kind of have to be kind of careful with uh, make sure they're still doing the right thing. But so far, we've had pretty good luck with them. And any complaints, I shouldn't say that. But <laughs> I might be jinxing myself on the food trucks, but but uh, but that's the whole idea is to make them safe and and good for the public. And we don't want anybody coming in slipshod and not doing mm -hmm. what they're supposed to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a public meeting. So we at least from Sonic, least, by the way, Hunter. This is Hunter. Hunter. Yeah, at least we will see you here, yeah. just for record's sake. And uh, Sonic does say something to us. Jo Sonic does a do good job too. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin does a good job. We like we like having him around. So. No, we need you to come and introduce us. <laughs> you got to come and encourage you. No, no, come and introduce us. No, he, us. He's, yeah, everybody kind of introduced themselves oh, early, so oh, yeah, you want to. So for record, if we see you on TV, then we know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Well, my name's Hunter Skeet, and I work for Sonic Drive-In. I've been doing that for about 35 years, and uh, it's really what I do. And we have our own internal inspection. We have, we're NSF certified, so we do it twice a year. We don't know when they're coming. They're, believe it or not, they're harder than Kevin. <laughs> so it's a good thing, though. But uh, any questions? <laughs> Well, My puppy uh, loves your loves Sonic. Yeah. He, loves to go, he loves to go to Sonic. He loves to go bye bye. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> I still have Kevin and Teresa here. Any <laughs> closing uh, questions that you think uh, comments for them? Okay. Well, uh, thanks for making it to this meeting. And like I said, uh, we are going to meet more often. I think uh, five years was just too much. Uh, we have so many ordinances. And uh, Teresa, I believe we talked about the leash. Ordinance and all of those We're stuff. Be, we, we met about a year and a half ago, um, maybe two years ago, about, sorry. Um, we met a couple years ago. We had some local rescues and a vet and um, shelter staff and um, we're looking at revisions to the code. Uh, Animal shelter code hasn't been updated since prior, right around 2013, I believe, was the last time. Um, there's been some minor changes in laws regarding um, paperwork required by us and presenting to people when we're doing quarantines and that kind of thing. Um, not necessarily something that needs to be in the code, but there are some things that I would like to see happen. Um, I don't know if people are going to go for this or the city council is going to go for this, but instead of a city tag, I would like to see animals microchipped within the city limits. Um, it's a permanent form of identification, and if they pick up their animals from the shelter after they've been caught as strays, it would be required that they register them at that time, get the microchip, so that if they do get become strays again and we pick them up again, we can identify them as that dog. We can contact the owner immediately. It spends less time for that animal on shelter. Um, less exposure to illnesses and things coming in. Um, the animal stays healthier, it goes back home sooner, and it keeps animals out of the shelter and gives room for the ones that don't have homes. So that would be, that would probably be my biggest thing. Um, we did do some revisions to Dangerous Dog. We've got some trapping issues that we need to look at. Um, our trapping code right now is really, really vague. And so we looked at some other cities and we kind of pulled from different codes of ordinances from other places and came up with one that seems reasonable for us, takes into account hot weather, cold weather, that kind of thing. It's not okay for us to be guilty of animal cruelty by leaving an animal in a cage overnight when it's pouring rain with no shelter. So we have to be able to tell people we're not doing this. And that's our general policy anyway, but we want to make sure that it's in the code so that people understand that we're not going to set a trap out in your backyard where there's no cover to catch an animal that can't get to its den and can't get to protection and is stuck in that kennel being poured on all night long or in freezing weather or super hot weather. So we needed to look at that. Um, there are several different things that just minor changes that we have uh, gone over and Wording and fine-tuning is um, kind of where we are right now. And as soon as I get that nailed down, then I'm going to give that to Jeff Davis, let him go over and make sure that everything that we're doing and we're suggesting is legal. Um, once we get cleared for that, then we can present to the city council and um, hopefully get that passed. This is a random, random question, but when you mentioned the strays being microchipped, do you, do you have issues with repeat strays absolutely mm -hmm. is there anything in 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 the code about that that you know one of the things that so many times we do there? and there are on the back page the very last page in our animal chapter of the city code there's a list of charges um, for animals that are spayed or neutered the first offense is $30 to reclaim your animal. Second offense is 60. Third offense is 90. If they're unneutered animals, the first offense is 45. Second offense is 100. Third offense is 150. We have people that have paid $150 multiple times. Wow. So one of the things that I was looking at adding, and this is not something that we discussed when we were looking at the codes, but a um, clause for irresponsible pet owners mm -hmm. so that the shelter could 
after so many offenses, um, obtain ownership of that animal and rehome it to somebody that's going to be responsible. Okay. So. Anything else? Absolutely. Then uh, lastly, I want to discuss the, the meeting times. Um, Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Uh, I think the target is to meet the last Wednesday at 5.30. Yeah, does it work for you? Do you want us to change it? Because we as staff can be flexible to meet your time. Or if you think it's okay, then... And you're speaking of this being quarterly? Yes, or, or as needed, probably. Or there might be a time when we might have to let you meet to review an ordinance. So, mm -hmm. But the target is to meet um, every three months. So. Are you, uh, 530, OK? Or, yes. OK? Yeah. All right. Uh, any closing remarks? OK. Well, thank you for responding to your emails. Uh, we really appreciate that, and I, I hope we can meet more often and discuss great ideas to make Nagodoches uh, the lovely city that we all love. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank Have you. a good evening. Where are you at that? Um, Warden.